Iowa State is off to its fastest start in years. The Cyclones came back to beat OU last week in a Julius Minka League putback, and now ISU is taking a peek at the top. The Cowboys are led by All-American Byron Houston. Oklahoma State is over. By Dr. Pepper, first of all, for the visiting Cowboys, Houston has got to get going offensively, and if he's going to do that, then Williams, Alexander, and Sutton are going to have to hit the outside shots. For Iowa State, Justice Thigpen is not starting today, a disciplinary action. He will be in the lineup later on in the contest. Skip McGoy takes his place. Bayless, Minkley, Hoiberg, and Eaton round out the top five. The our officials for today, all veterans, Ron Spittler, Ron Zetcher, and J.C. Leinbach. And we'll be back with the opening tip, who's have been living in the zone on the road lately. Well, it'd be interesting to see the adjustments Oklahoma State has made after the last two couple of times that they've seen this 2-3 zone. Johnny Orr doesn't like the 2-3 zone, but I think you'll see him use it some here. Now, one thing on that series note that we should point out, none of the seniors from Oklahoma State have won here at Hilton 0-3 against the Cyclones. And here's the 2-3 zone. Oklahoma State wants to get it in the paint, but they'll be able to get perimeter shots from the corner if they take them. Houston inside to Reeves. Blocked by Nicoli. Oklahoma State comes out in their man-to-man -man defense. That's the base defense they use. Mikalik will try to bring Reeves out on the court. Bayless now will reset the offense with 26 on the shot clock. This crowd is into it early on here in Ames. Mikalik open. Batted around. Who's coming down with it? It will stay with ISU. Alexander let it go, thinking it was going to go to the Cowboys. Well, anytime you can catch the ball before it goes out of bounds, catch it. Don't take a chance of something like that happening. Skip McCoy is getting the first start this year in the place of Thigpen. Thigpen said something in the Kansas game that Johnny Orr did not appreciate, and therefore Justice is on the bench for a moment. Iowa State very patient. Back door to Bayless is off target. It was tipped out by Oklahoma State. And it'll stay with the Cyclones with 30 on the shot clock. When you play a team that plays good, hard, man-to-man, -man, you want to make them use some energy, not take quick shots and let them really get into the rhythm of the game. Ron Spittler over to tell the OSU bench to sit down, at least not get in the way of the play. The benches are very close to the floor here. Well, you can see the intensity on both of these teams, and the Cowboys know they've got to have a win here today. Houston with a steal. Here comes Byron on the dribble, and a foul on McCoy. Well, Byron Houston at 6'7 is able to handle the basketball in the open court. He'll deflect the pass from Eaton, pick it up, and he's off to the races. I think Houston was trying to go between his legs and take it to the glass with McCoy. Not much contact there as McCoy just knocked the basketball away, but the Cowboys retain possession. The 40th steal of the year for Houston. So look how Iowa State's packed in the lane. That's going to be a tough shot. Houston on the follow, still loose. And it'll go to the Cyclones. Still no score. We've played a minute 45. Sutton has not lost two straight games at Oklahoma State. And they haven't lost three in a row on the road. This is also wanting the ISU bench to stay out of the action. Bayless. Houston. Oh, cleared off Mikulik. Big rebound. Houston just separates Mikulik from any opportunity to get that rebound. In the corner for Alexander inside to Reeves. Now Williams for three. Eaton over Reeves. Still no score. We play two and a half. Foul on Williams, his first. Cyclones love coming home to Hilton, especially after that 31-point loss to Kansas. And look what the home teams have done in the Big 8 Conference. McCoy tried from outside. It was no good. We still have no score. Again, Iowa 
State defensively wants to pack it in the paint. They'll give up the corner shots, the perimeter jumpers. Alexander for a three. Boy, the three. Heater, if he'd have hit that one against Colorado, that was a shot almost from the same range that he missed that would have tied the game at CU and Boulder. He'll have a lot of those opportunities this afternoon against the 2-3 defense. Alexander, one of five from three against Colorado. 3-0 Cowboys, 16-49 left to go. Clock rolling in the first half. Bayless will try to tie it. He start for Oklahoma State from the perimeter, a place they've been struggling the last three games. They've knocked down the last two. Mikalik to McCoy, back to Mikalik on the give and go. That was halfway down and came back out again. Inside, Reeves had it poked away by Hoiberg. Here comes Mikalik. Look at the big man on the dribble to Eaton. McCoy and Williams go up for it. Alternate possession will go to the Cyclones. But first, we're going to step aside. 15-51 left to go in the first half. It's been a game of jump shot. This is a good non-call. There's some body contact on this rebound, but both players get their hands in the ball at the same time. Jump ball in that case, no foul. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Incorporated and intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the video or audio portions of the program without the express prior written consent of Raycom Incorporated is forbidden. 1540 left to go, first half, 6-3 Cowboys. You can see Oklahoma State has really extended their man-to-man -man defense further from the basket than we've seen in the last couple of games. They are challenging every passing lane. McCoy, that was for two. It doesn't go. Williams has the rebound. To Alexander. Milton Brown, who has checked in. Sutton for a three. Three three-pointers for the Cowboys, and that might get Iowa State out of the zone. Well, it's amazing how some games you just can't find the range, and this game, Oklahoma State shooting very well from the perimeter. You almost get the sense that Eddie Sutton is a little bit relieved that teams are playing the zone because he knows he's going to see that down the stretch and in the NCAA tournament. Well, he's relieved as long as they shoot the ball like that. Knocked out of bounds by Reeves. It'll stay with the Cyclones. McCoy has got yet to score and is 0 for 3 now from the field. And you've noticed on the other end, Iowa State is getting everything from the perimeter. Nobody going to the glass. They're going to have to take the ball inside, penetrate with the dribble, and try to get some easier shots. Door. Hoiberg to Eaton. Stolen away by Williams. Cyclones stay in their zone. There it is. Alexander giving him the shot. Sutton. Williams around the perimeter. Brown with a rebound. Put it back up and in. What nice head and shoulder fake on his way up and then great body control to get it off the glass. And Oklahoma State has opened up an 11-3 lead. When you're struggling shooting, you have to take the ball to the rim. Bayless tried. Bayless, unbelievable. Wow. That was a Harlem Globetrotter move. Marcus Haynes at his best. Bayless has all five Cyclone points. Reeves again having trouble hanging on to the ball, and he is fouled by McCoy, who picks up his second. You know, they've got pretty good body control when you can lose your footing and yet control the dribble. Nice job by Ron Bayless, but he said, hey, I'm all by myself, I'll shoot it. And hit it. And Justice Thigman checks in along with Lauren Meyer for Iowa State. Houston comes back in along with Randy Davis. Our congratulations to this week's Big Eight Wrestler of the Week, Nebraska's Chris Nelson, 
four Big 8 spots are ranked in the nation's top 20. You can catch them in action March 7th at Gallagher Ibe Arena in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Houston with his second three in Big 8 play. He was one for 10 in the conference play from three-point range until that shot. Houston's first three of the game. Boy, when teams aren't shooting well and they get off early, it seems to really give them some confidence. Bayless wide open and Hoiberg found it. Nice backdoor cut by Bayless. Bayless still the only guy to score for Iowa State. He has all seven. Sutton for three. Ah, oh, man. I mean, they are stepping up and letting it go and expecting it to go in. Five of six from three-point land for OSU. Johnny Orr saying, why didn't they shoot like this against Colorado and Nebraska? Ooh, had Hoiberg. 17 on the shot clock. Eaton, oh, stolen away. Telegraphed that pass. And then Hoiberg came in and tied it up along with Eaton, and it's an alternate possession that will go to the Cowboys. Corey Williams over to check back in for OSU. Oklahoma State has got all but two of their points from three-point range. And they've been giving them the shots as we thought they might. Oklahoma State again gets off early. The confidence starts to grow, and now you're seeing them shoot the ball a little bit quicker than they normally might. Houston. That's too strong. Hoiberg has the rebound. Boy, Houston came flashing in. Hoiberg. Wow. What a good, strong move with the right hand by the freshman high off the glass. 17-9. Cyclones and their fans trying to get back in this one. How much longer does Orr stay in this zone? Well, maybe a little longer. Big pen. He's fouled. Big pen comes flying off the bench, but Hoiberg, look at this move that he made just a moment ago. Well, Hoiberg's a strong athlete, takes this one to the glass, but the play, just a thick pin off the steal. Sean Sutton, not a smart move here. Thick pin is strong enough that unless you really clamp him, he's going to take you up with him. A little touch foul and thick pin in for two. And maybe three. It is a Houston has another rebound. He gets his hands on the ball, and nobody's touching him. Still packing inside, trying to take away Davis of Houston. Sutton for another three. It won't go. Tipped in the corner. It will go to Oklahoma State. Tipped out by Thigpen. So with 10.56 to go, Oklahoma State has hit their threes, much to Johnny Orr's chagrin. Continental, the only airline with service to every major ski resort in Colorado and throughout the Rockies. Continental, one airline can make a difference. Stay tuned to halftime. Dave Logan and I will be giving you this week's Norwegian Cruise Line trivia contest questions. Have your pencil and paper ready. Oklahoma State, 17-11. The lead for the Cowboys. The Cowboys have hit five three-pointers. And Alexander loses it off his shin and out of bounds. Well, last night, Dave, we saw these Cowboys at the hand that rocks the cradle. Right now, they're rocking Iowa State, leading 17-11. Big Ben's got to get rid of it. Almost a five-second call. 
Cyclones trying to really spread the floor, take away any double team possibilities. Force the Cowboys to play good man to man. Hoiberg for three. Houston with another rebound. So Houston's popped out the last couple of times to the top of the key. Is that an effort to get him the ball more? Get him free or offensively? But I think when you don't get as many shots as you normally might, you become very frustrated, and you want to get your hands on the ball, and you start to go further and further away from the basket. You can see the defense. Any man inside gets double-teamed front and back. Iowa State has taken the paint so far away from the Cowboys. It's been a while since the Cowboys have scored. Looks like that zone is a little bit more effective. Bayless for a three. Big Penn stole the rebound away. And then blocked by Davis out of bounds. Well, he is strong, upper body-wise, just as thick pin, just mauls you when it gets you down the box. Reeves and Brown check back in for the Cowboys. 9.35 left in the last half. Bayless will get arrested. Brian Pearson checks in. Pearson the senior. The Cyclone team so young. Pearson and Pippett, the only seniors on this club. The old guns versus the young guns, I guess you could say. Brian Zetcher goes over to talk to the scorer's table. They're talking about the 45-second shot clock. Right now, you see it 41. They reset it, but move it to 41. Two big freshmen in the paint, really banging each other, Myers and Re Meyer and Reeves. Pippen goes down. Houston picks up his first. And this is not the kind of foul that Byron Houston wants to pick up. He'll get his share playing good hard defense, but Houston tries to cut the corner over the pick by Meyer and beat Pippen to a spot. Pippen let him have that basketball and then beat him to the basket. Third team foul on Oklahoma State. Pippett had it touched by Houston to pick it up again. Now back to Pippett. Look at Houston right with him. Meyer, he strikes out. He can't find the range. And Iowa State struggling shooting the ball. You said they needed to shoot 50%, Dave. So far, they're not doing that. And they really haven't had a lot of good shots. They've forced two or three opportunities. And, of course, against this Cowboy defense, you won't get a lot of great looks at the basket. Uh, Houston, he yep. goes for a three. That's his second three of the game. You can see he wants the ball. It's going to be tough to get the ball in the paint. So he steps out and hits it from 19. Houston playing where Sean Sutton usually plays the point of that zone. And Brown slaps it away. Nikolai will check in along with Corey Williams. Raycon, pleased to welcome those viewers joining us on Prime Network and the nationwide family of Prime Regional Sports Cable Networks. With Dave Logan, I'm Dave Armstrong. We're in Ames, Iowa. Big Ben, that was for two. Reeves has the rebound. Iowa State just having a, an awful day shooting the basketball, a carryover from their game at Kansas when they shot just 36% for the game. Reeves, tough shot. Yeah, if he freshman gets, knocks it down. Excuse me, if he gets it down there, size-wise and body strength is going to be a mismatch with Nikolai. An 11-point Cowboy lead. They've doubled the score of the Cyclones. I think Johnny Orr's got to be happy with the only 22 points for the Cowboys, but his offense is not playing right now. Double team and a foul on Sutton. His second. 
But Sean Sutton got in no man's land. He swatted at the basketball twice and then decided, hey, I better go ahead and try to grab it with two hands. Meek Leak looks for the backdoor cut. There's one swat, too. He said, ah, just let me have it. But the call before Sutton got his hands in the basketball. An 11-point Cowboy lead, and we're back after this. Six joins Big 8 Conference Universities in recognizing academic excellence among Big 8 student-athletes. Safe fans, break away to your nearest Phillips 66 station. Enter the Super Clean Sweepstakes for a chance to win a trip for two to Acapulco or the 92 National Collegiate Basketball Championship. You can also win a trip to the Phillips 66 Big 8 tournament or tickets to Big 8 home games in your area. Enter now at participating Phillips 66 stations. Oh, Iowa State just pitiful from the field in their percentages in Oklahoma State. They're happy with their 53. And again, the, really, the story of the first half here, Oklahoma State defensively really forcing Iowa State to some tough shots. That's just Nick Ben. He's got four. And he could hit that shot even with somebody right in his face. And now man-to-man -man for the first time for Iowa State. And now you can look for the Cowboys to pound the basketball inside the Reeves and Houston. Hoiberg almost had a steal from Brown. Hooked out of bounds. It'll go to the Cyclones. Is Orr perhaps trying to up the tempo a little bit? Well, he'd like more scoring. You can see Milton Brown here really not doing a good job of handling the basketball, nowhere to fit that pass in. And Brown's not a guy you want to handle the basketball 19 feet from the hole. See the turnovers. The Cowboys have had troubles a little bit hanging on. Bayless had it blocked away. Reeves had the rebound. There's a battle going on now between Eaton and Houston. Big Ben tipped it away. And a foul on Bayless. All of a sudden, the intensity is up the notch. Well, when both teams now play man-to-man, -man, you're going to see a lot more action. And I think Eddie Sutton accomplished his goal, at least early in the game. Johnny Orr wanted to come out and zone this Cowboy team. Oklahoma State virtually shot them out of the zone. Hitting those five three-pointers will do it. So now it's man-to-man, -man, and this is what the Cowboys, really, the defense the Cowboys would most like to face. And really a defense that Iowa State would like to play. Orr told us yesterday it scared him to death to play a zone. Houston, who had 34 in the first encounter, misses the shot there. And a foul inside. I think it's going on Reeves. Might be on Houston. It is. It's on Houston, who picks up his second. And again, this is simply a frustration foul. Byron Houston gets the ball right where he wants it. The pick inside freezes Eaton. You just got to make that shot. And when it didn't go in, Houston went after the ball foolishly. Now he's got two fouls. He's got to be careful. Hatcher oh, knocks nice. it away. What a play to Houston. And here comes Williams. Blocked. But a foul on Bayless, who has his second. Well, Corey Williams is most known for his defensive ability. This time, Baylor says, I'll show you a little defense of my own. Great block up top, but the body contact beneath. And the Cowboys, again, making things happen with the defense. Hatcher in the passing lane saves the ball. The transition basket, or at least attempt, by Oklahoma State. Now, Bayless has got to be careful with two quick ones. Williams is 76% free throw shooter this year. Eddie Sutton in his second season at Oklahoma State. And he hits them both. 5.36 left to go before the half, and McCoy will check in. Bayless with two fouls will sit down. Alexander also checking into the lineup for OSU. And Corey Williams will get a rest. And some full court pressure now by the Cowboys. Full court zone trap. Now take it to the hole. Eaton, short. Rebound bounced over. Hoiberg 
Reeves picked it up, and then one of those fouls you were talking about, a frustration foul by Eaton. Well, Eaton, when you've got a two-on-one fast break, Howard Eaton has got to take the ball to the rack and force Reeves to commit. Howard Eaton, here, two-on-one, take it to him, but don't pull up for a 15-foot jump shot and then commit the foul. See, Iowa State not doing a good job of taking care of numbers when they've got it. They haven't had it many times so far, but when they've had, they've done a poor job. Iowa State, a team that averages 85 a game with only 13 points, 15 minutes into this ballgame. Take a look at Houston and Eaton inside if you want to see two guys bang it. Oklahoma State now settled down offensively. They're in the comfort zone. They shot the ball well. Everything is flowing freely. Houston misses from three-point range. Unless they got a wake-up call after the shot. He went down in his can. Mikali. Let's see. Will it count? Yes, and he is fouled. Mikali will go to the line. Hatcher snuck in in a phantom play. And Hatcher picks up the foul. One little subtle move, and I hope we pick it up. Watch how Mikalik will slide to the baseline to avoid the charge of Hatcher. Seems slide just enough to the baseline. Hatcher is there after he comes down. Not many guys 6'11 can put the ball on the floor and then have enough body control that they can avoid a charge like that. Mikalik off to a similar start as he was against the Cowboys in the first encounter. Mikalik with only two right now. He had only three at the half in the game of Stowar. He's got three right now for Johnny Orr. Orr in his 12th year at Iowa State, the winningest coach in ISU history. And Randy Davis will come off the Cowboy bench. Reeves will get a rest. Iowa State a little pressure of their own. Hoiberg with Hatcher. Nice pass to Davis. Davis, the slam dunk champion of these Cowboys. Well, that's what you call a high percentage shot. <laughs> that's the best way I know to get an assist in the record book. Ten point Oklahoma State lead. I think if you'd have told Johnny O before the game, you're going to hold these guys to about 26 points with four and a half to go in a half. He said, I'll take that. What he doesn't like is his offense with only 16. Of course, it's strong. Houston snatches it away from Mikulik, who had the basketball. Davis on the alley-oop from Sutton and a perfect pass. You might want to get a timeout here. I'm not sure Johnny feels like he's got anything going offensively. TV timeout in a few seconds, so he'll wait for that. to play away from the hoop. We've got nobody moving for the Cyclones. No backdoor cuts as of right now. The shot clock is at 15. There it is. Big pad. Davis swats it away. Here comes Sutton. Smart play. No numbers. Kicks it right back out. Inside to Houston. And he went right over Mikali. Mikalik and Houston having some words. Mikalik remembers that wake-up call from the last game where Mikalik had to get some stitches. Well, Byron Houston has eight on the blocks. Left arm will hold off Howard Eaton. He gets the pass perfectly thrown from Sutton. The little head and shoulder fakes there gets Mikalik in the air just enough, and then he powers the basketball up and in. He's as good as any player in the country when he gets the basketball in that position. Bayless has checked back in as Iowa State shooting just 28% from the field. Bayless is going to have to play the rest of this half with two fouls. Johnny Orr kind of rolling the dice a little bit. Back door. It's really the first backdoor cut all by itself that Iowa State's been able to get. And a foul on Davis as he tries to clear out using that Byron Houston move. It's a seventh team foul on OSU. You see Davis with the left hand try to establish position. Mikalik trying to work his way off. The little shove with the left forearm. 
it helps if the defender takes a couple of steps back as Mikalik did. Mikalik, a good free throw shooter and a good shooter overall. As Sutton takes a tour of his bench. He's got Byron Houston now on the bench with two fouls, and he's going to send Houston back in. Just as I say, Mikalik, a good free throw shooter. He misses the front end of the one and one. Hey, when you're trying to come back, that kind of stuff will kill you. Remember, though, Oklahoma State had an eight-point lead at Colorado and lost at the half. And an eight-point halftime lead against the Buffs. This crowd has been taken out of the game right now. Sean Pell, who is a seldom-used player, he comes in and gets good position. it away a 14 point cowboy lead which matches their biggest hell goes out Houston comes back in along with Sean Sutton that's the danger you see Johnny Orr just tell Howard Eaton that wasn't open the backdoor cuts against a man-to-man -man defense you have to make eye contact with the passer that time Eaton felt like big pin was going to stay out big pin headed to the basket and Orr thought the 60 points his team scored at Kansas was bad they're on the pace right now to score somewhere in the 40s Houston again. He's got 10 points now. At 34 in the first encounter between these two this year. I'll tell you, when he gets it down there, forget it. Just put it in the books. He's too strong. Understands the man-to-man -man defense, and he takes it strong. Houston glad to see Iowa State again because Byron hadn't scored 19 or more in his last five games. Eaton can't get it, and Davis there to get the rebound. The shooting woes continue for the Cyclones. Nice. What a pass to Hatcher. Good play by Alexander. A great vision by Alexander in the baseline cut. Almost off balance. Finds Hatcher slicing from the left side. And Iowa State is just struggling to score right now. 18-point Cowboy lead. Sealed off. Who are they going to get? Davis? Yeah, it's on Davis. It's, uh, Oklahoma State breathes a sigh of relief. That could have been on Houston. When you've got 18 points in the half and it's under a minute to go, you force some things. Meekly, a good offensive player. Really, no place to go there. Houston slides over, cuts off the lane, and fortunately for Iowa State, Davis picks up that foul. He bailed Meekly out on that one. <laughs> bailed Houston out, too. This time we'll get the bonus. 45 seconds to go in the half. You think Oklahoma State will go for the last shot? Without a doubt. Go to the locker room with a big lead, no matter what happens. And Williams will check back in. Davis checks out. Also, Houston will take a seat to try to protect him with those two fouls. Davis also has two, so he'll sit down. Good coaching by Sutton. Yeah, very smart move by Eddie. And now you've got five players in the court for Oklahoma State that can all handle the basketball. And they work the weave, trying to work the clock. You see, that's the game clock. Williams loses the handle off Hoiberg and out of bounds. The shot clock has been turned off. The time you'll see on the screen will be the game clock, the time remaining in the first half. It sounds like a golf match in here right now. This crowd is, crowd is strangely quiet. So no, oh, nice cut. Yeah, you go for the last shot unless you get something like that. Alexander now has five. Eaton doesn't have a lot of time. Eaton's got to put it up. And that pretty much sums up the first half for Iowa State. A couple of misses by the Cyclones to end the half. And Eddie Sutton's relieved that his team beat the zone and is right now beating the Cyclones 38 to 20.
Phillips six to ten you with that defensive intensity they also have to expect the Cyclones to have a couple of charges should recharge Iowa State must up the tempo get some easier shots and rebound get some second opportunities Iowa State with three offensive rebounds in the first half if you're not shooting well that's one way you can stay in the game and Orr's going with a bigger lineup with Meyer and Mikalik out there together Bayless. That's a good start for the Cyclones in the second half. The way ISU started in the first half with Bayless scoring. And Iowa State with a little zone pressure. I think, again, you'll try to up the tempo. You'll try to force Oklahoma State to shoot the ball a little quicker than they did in the first half. And then you have to hope that they don't shoot it quite as well as they did in the first half. ISU has scrapped their zone defense. Houston was bumped by Meyer on his way to the hoop. But Meyer got a piece of that basketball in the lob. Meyer's an athletic 6'11 freshman. Mikalik for three. Short. Alexander is fouled by McCoy. That's his third. Now we're at the beginning of the game. We check the storyline and let's see how these things stack up. Well, as we said earlier, Oklahoma State would have to uh, get a win here if they wanted to keep pace with Kansas. Would have to do a good job beating the zone defense, and they have, and Byron Houston's in the offense. Iowa State, forget the first one unless they can come back. Also forget about Kansas, and they shot 28% in the first half here. And that all translates into a big lead for the Cowboys. Meyer with the block. Look up. Mikalik over Houston. Reeves. He's looking for someone to give it to. He finally finds Alexander. Reeves wide open. Brian Reeves, somebody let him go, and he's got four, and again, an 18-point Cowboy lead. Mikalik. Nice That's job. Interesting Holt. matchup, isn't good, it? Good job of fending off Houston with the big body on his way to the glass. And you can see the intensity is picked up, the pace is picked up, and Iowa State has to like that. Reeves had to change his shot in midair and did it. How about that for athletic ability from a seven foot? <laughs> wow. When you think about the young centers in this league. See, Reeves, they, Meyer, Meekly. Some good young players. Iowa State has to think in terms of spurts. They're 18 points down. You want to get it to about 10 with about 10 minutes left. You can't try to make it up all the time or all at once. Be patient. Stay in your offense and get good shots at the basket. We're three minutes into the second half. What good defense by Oklahoma State. I think right now the Cyclones are sick of looking at good defense. Kansas stuck them on Wednesday and Oklahoma State is sticking them today. Well, Iowa State is, as you mentioned, seen a couple of good defensive defensive teams. Mikalik tries to set a pick. Can't find anybody to pick. I think Sean Sutton gets called for the foul on the inbounds pass. That's his third. Iowa State saying uh, someone was in the act of shooting on that, but officials instead give uh, Cyclones the ball out of bounds. McCoy for three. His first points of the game, and the crowd is alive again at Hilton. Williams. Oh, count it. Oh, what a strong move to the glass. Corey Williams, we talked about his defensive ability, but he is explosive as an athlete. Watch him make up his mind and take this thing strong to the glass into Meyer. Some kind of move. Williams with one shot. Williams so athletic. You mentioned in the game against Kansas, you thought he might be drafted in the NFL. Well, he's got all the uh, characteristics of a good defensive back. Strength, 
good hand strength, quickness, speed. He's a tough kid, too. And right now, he's got a tough eight points for OSU. folks well we talked about him and watching him practice several times this year I was amazed at his athletic ability for one so large watch this doubles underneath the basket he looks like he's 6'5 this kid is going to be an excellent player in the next couple of years Iowa State fans are going to have fun things to watch we've seen two seven footers make adjustments in the air on shots here in the second half Bigger lineup is doing some damage now for ISU. Holder within 15. A walk by Williams. Corey pointing to himself saying, I didn't make the right choice. But if he gives up the ball early, Reeves has a dunk, but he took the ball right to Meyer and hesitated a bit. And listen to this play. Point Cowboy lead. And Andy's trying to wait for the TV timeout. Now the experience of the Cowboys as they try to quiet this crowd that will not be quieted. clock at 15 a decibel level at 100 and a foul on Houston his third and if you thought it was loud before well, Byron Houston will try to get the pass, and Alexander Meekleek gets a hand, and there's the push by Houston. He just shoves Meekleek out of the way, and that's a big foul. We'll be back after this from Phillips 66. Makers of super clean. Kendall. Win a trip for two to Acapulco or the 92 National College Basketball Championship. Also win a trip to the Phillips 66 Big 8 tournament. Our tickets to Big 8 home games in your area. Enter now at participating Phillips 66 stations. 15-25 left to go in the ball game. ISU making a charge, trailing now by 13. And Byron Houston has picked up his third foul. McCoy, another three. Wow. We've got a 10-point ball game. State has been able to do it by turning up the defense. That's been the change here in the second half. And this crowd is on its feet. <laughs> Sutton for three. Here comes Bayless. And Oklahoma State has become so passive offensively just trying to take care of the basketball. They're not looking at the rim. After a five-second call, they're worrying too much about taking care of the ball and not attacking the basket as they did in the first half. this basketball game quicker than I'm sure anybody thought they might. Another defensive steal, Bayless to the glass. And the Cowboys now are going to have to come out and match that intensity, and certainly Hilton Magic is alive and well on Ames, Iowa. Now the Cyclones up to their old tricks now on a 17-7 run. You can see Oklahoma State now trying to come out and get back in the defensive rhythm. 
Hoiberg made an adjustment. He's fouled by Sutton, and Sean picks up number four. Hoiberg, a freshman, one of the outstanding traits. Look at the ability to locate the ball while in the air and then catch it and get it up. Sutton picks up number four, and he's going to have to sit down for a while. Sutton has to sit now. What's this going to do to the complexion of the game? Well, it hurts Oklahoma State from the outside. It also hurts them ball handling-wise and leadership-wise in the court. Cowboys have become very passive offensively, much due to the Iowa State defensive aggression. Johnny Orr made the adjustment of putting Mikalik and Meyer to start the second half, and it's paid big dividends, but now Hoiberg, with a rare mistake, throws it away. Big 8 winter championships are gearing up. Make plans now to attend the 92 Big 8 men's and women's gymnastics event held here at Hilton, March 27th and 28th. Let's see what Oklahoma State does on this trip offensively. You want to attack the glass when you're playing an all-out defense like this. Be aggressive. And a foul inside. That one's going to go on Meyer, and Warren picks up his second. That's the fourth team foul on ISU. Don't forget to call Domino's Pizza right now. If you do, you'll have a piping hot pizza waiting for you before the end of the game. Dave and I will be enjoying one as we get out of here. <laughs> Boy, almost had a steal. Shot clock is at 28. Meyer. Davis did not stay strong when he posted Meyer up. The pass was good. Davis got small. And Meyer got huge. Door Hoiberg. Great pass from Mikulik and Hoiberg again with outstanding hands. 12 straight by the Cyclones. Quiet the crowd in a hurry. Boy, did they need that. And a technical on Mikalik. Mikalik and Houston have been jawing at each other for a long time. And there it is, right there. You can see as Houston went by, he was saying something to Julius. Well, Mikalik is upset from the last game in Stillwater where he got stitches from Houston's elbow. And Mikalik and Houston get tied a little bit and frankly I'm not exactly sure from that angle as to where the technical came from Alexander missed the first of two free throw shots and Orr can't believe it Alexander has scored the last four now for OSU oh watch Mikalik and Houston as they continue to go at each other here this afternoon. And Houston will come out. I think it's a good move by Sutton. A good move because you don't want Byron Houston to pick up his fourth foul on some silly altercation. Let him cool off a bit the bench. Sean Pell takes his place. Ten point Cowboy lead. Clock at 25. Alexander for another three. Hoiberg, who always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Got the numbers. Bayless. He's got a lucky 13 for ISU. State defensively in this half looks like Oklahoma State did in the first half. Swarming the basketball. Alexander. 
Hill. Bayless got lucky. Meyer throws it away. Here comes Williams. A walk. Ten forty nine to go in this one. Has the complexion of this game changed or what? An 18 point Cowboy lead at the half has been reduced now to just eight. And it's reduced Eddie Sutton to just kind of look over on the sidelines looking for some help. Well Iowa State in less than 10 minutes in the second half have already scored more points than they did in the entire first half. And they've done it with defense and pressure on the basketball. Cowboys have turned it over six times this half to just two for the Cyclones. And just as Thigpen checks in for the Cyclones, he'll replace Skip McCoy with a couple of big three-pointers. Oklahoma State was waiting for the television timeout as Houston seems to have a wry smile now. But Oklahoma State had called a timeout, which took away the television timeout. Taking it right to the basket and taking it up and over Byron Houston. And it's a six-point game. And all this in less than ten minutes. Bayless almost had a steal. Houston. Oh, 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 man. Turnabout is fair play. Byron says, you want to take it strong to the glass? How do you like this? His over first, Mikuli. His first points, Dave, in the second half. for three. It's short. Reeves seals him off. Right now, Meekly needs to forget about his battle with Houston and concentrate on what he needs to do. Hoiberg. Here comes Bayless. That's a tough shot. And a foul though on Hatcher. Hatcher picks up his second. Now this is a case where Ron Bayless gets bailed out because he forces the shot to the baseline. This is an extremely difficult shot. Hatcher there in plenty of time and actually gives with his upper body. And did not like that call. Sixteen foul on the Cowboys this half. I think both teams right now are looking frantically for that second win. Both expended a lot of energy in the first 10 minutes of the second half, especially Iowa State. I see a lot of guys pulling on their shorts, trying to <laughs> ask, hey, how about some O2 in this building? Bayless again trying to pull the Cyclones back within six as Milton Brown checks back in. Well, the bench is going to be important with the emotions and the, the pace of this game. Yeah, it really is. I think both uh, both Johnny Orr and Eddie Sutton are going to have to go maybe a bit deeper to their bench than they thought initially. Bayless leading all scores now with 15. Boy, who would have thunk it? Oklahoma State was cruising up 18. Here comes Thigpen on the miss from Brown. Bayless, he's feeling it. Out of bounds, off Houston. Meekly got a hand in there. And that is rare because Byron Houston had his mitts on the basketball. Meekly was able to knock it free as he came from the glass. Houston has his hands here. Meekly will come from the left side of your screen. We'll see a little bit later. Boy, trying to rip a ball away from Houston is like trying to take a steak away from a hungry wolf. Somehow Mikalik separated him from the ball. Myers followed by Reeves from behind, and Meyer will go to one and one. Let's take a look back at that play by Houston. Mikalik just knocks it out of his hand right there. The last play, Reeves has got to realize that he's got good position. Big guys have a tendency to want to play with their hands more than their feet. Reeves reaches around. That's an automatic call. Meyer 
One and one now opportunity for Lauren. And Skip McCoy checks over to the bench and he'll take the place of Bayless who's fatigued just a little bit. And a well-deserved rest for Bayless who leaves with 15. That's way short. Houston always seems to know where the ball's going to go and has another rebound. I'll tell you, I don't expect this Cowboy team to crack down the stretch. They've got too many veteran players, guys that have been through the war. They might lose the game, but I don't think you'll see them come apart at the seams. Iowa State, if they're to win this, they're going to have to take it from them. Shot clock is at 15. Sutton is playing with four fouls, loses the handle momentarily. Davis has it swatted from behind by Meyer. And McCoy wisely pulls up. McCoy loses the handle and out of bounds. The pass a little too strong from Thigpen. Well, McCoy was thinking, hey, what am I going to do with this after I catch it? And took his eye off the basketball, much the way a receiver would in football. And it slipped through his hands. Looks like both these teams could use a timeout right now. They are fatigued. Evans, one of the assistant coaches for Oklahoma State, holding up a sign that says Cowboy High. Right now, the Cowboys would like to get on a high as they run this play. Houston, count it! What a play by Byron Houston, the All-American, and he's fouled by Mikali. I hope we can see how high he puts this thing off the left. Take a look at where this basketball kisses the glass. Tough to see. It was almost to the top of the backboard. And nice and soft. You can see used to looking at me thinks there. How'd you like that? Those two teams, those two guys have gone at each other today. Houston and Mikali. Now Houston trying to match Bayless's numbers with 15. Misses. Batted around and Hatcher comes out of there with it. Big opportunity for Oklahoma State. And now they can use some more clock. Run some time off the clock and make Iowa State work defensively. Sutton. Great back door from Sean Sutton. Oklahoma State, after finding the Cyclones, getting to within six, have pulled in front by ten again. Meyer has it stripped away. Nice hands by Davis to get it to Williams. No basket. No basket. He walked with it. Williams thought he had a nice move. And we've got a timeout. 6.38 to go. Guys in foul trouble for Oklahoma State. A couple of key figures in Sutton and Houston. McCoy, the only guy with three for Iowa State. The only one in trouble at all for Iowa State. Yeah, Sutton with four, but he's an expert at playing in foul trouble, and I'll be very surprised defensively if they catch him in the last six and a half minutes. Now you talked about uh, ISU making a couple of charges. Do they, they need another one right here with six and a half to go. And down ten. And Oklahoma State again has been able to regain their composure and control of the game, even temporarily, the last minute and a half. Mikali blocked by Davis, but there might be a foul. There is on Davis, who picks up his third. Mikalik will try to earn it at the line. Mikalik is so good at leaning in and creating contact. If Davis can feel here that this is going to be an incredibly difficult shot. You back off and don't swat down at the basketball. But Meek League at 6'11", very adept at getting inside and getting his body next to yours. Meek League was huge for ISU in that Oklahoma comeback. Well, again, we're pleased to welcome our friends joining us on Prime Network and the nationwide family of Prime's regional sports cable networks. 
Make it five of six from the line. And 11 points for Mikuli. Still plenty of time in this game. And the Cal Houston looking over at Sutton saying, oh, he's not coming out to get me. What should I do? Sean Sutton picks up the ball and gets it around to Davis. Five seconds. On the shot clock. Three. Blocked by Hoiberg. Here comes Thickpin with Houston in the way. Hoiberg left-handed. Well, he changed that midair because he expected Houston to come get it. Really made a nice spin and tremendous hand control with the left. And here comes ISU again, back to within six. See, the last time Oklahoma State ran the shot clock down but got an ill-advised jumper by Hatcher at almost when the time expired. You want to look to score early. Shot clock is at 16. Houston from the corner. Davis got inside, and he's fouled by Mikuli. Ball on number 42, Mikuli. Well, Houston pops out, and Mikuli goes after him, and therefore nobody blocks off Davis. The inside position, you can see, and Mike Bergman just did not put a body on Davis. Bergman is putting a body on Hoiberg. He lost sight of Davis. And Meyer will come off the bench, and Bergman will come out as Bergman puts his body in the to within four after they trailed by 18. Still plenty of time for Iowa State to run the offense, look for the backdoor cuts, get a good look at the basket. Meyer hangs on. Bayless for three! the seventh team foul on ISU and Hatcher will go to the line one and one Hatcher a 65 percent free throw shooter and Sutton comes back in coach Sutton wants his son Sean the coach on the floor the rest of the way and Hoiberg another coach on the floor for ISU will check in for the Cyclones Oh, the Cyclones, this is a, a comeback to write your folks about. Man. But they're not all the way back yet. <laughs> Hatcher will get the bonus. The Cowboys trying to keep their pistol loaded. They have not trailed in this game, and Right now, they're up by four. <laughs> Hatcher, the senior, cans them both in their seats, but they're not using them. They're all standing as Iowa State has come back from trailing from eight by 18. All this to give Eddie Sutton a migraine headache and Johnny Orr some hope as Oklahoma State leads by five. With Dave Logan, I'm Dave Armstrong, welcoming you to Ames, Iowa. This has been a doubleheader of sorts with Oklahoma State winning the first half and Iowa State winning the second, but it's not over yet. Iowa State plenty of time to run their offense. Bayless has been hot. High pick, look at inside, and Mika Leak, an excellent perimeter shooter as well. Now Myers got to unload it, and he does to Houston. And Bayless on a foul. There wasn't much he could do. And Houston, that uh, expression on his face is, all right, I guess I'll have to earn it. Well, Bayless telling Meyer, hey, throw it up in the air, but frankly, nobody came to Meyer. Five-second call. He's got to find somebody to pass the basketball. You have to come to the man with the ball, not run away from it. 
Houston, the front end of the one and one. And we'll see what he has done over the last couple of games. And make it 15 today. Sutton had this one in the bag, didn't he? Now he's got to sweat it out. Well, he's used to it. I'm sure he figured even 18 points ahead at halftime that Iowa State would come in groves in the second half, and that's exactly... I don't think he expected them to get back in the game as quickly as they did. And Houston misses the second one. Bayless, who's been hot, finds the front of the rim. Houston with another rebound. Three minutes to go. Sutton is fouled, and that's the wrong guy to foul if you're Iowa State. He's a good free throw shooter, especially down the stretch. Well, Iowa State down the stretch inside three minutes is going to have to look to stop the clock as many times as they possibly can. You can see Reeves, Houston, and Sutton for the Cowboys. Percentage-wise, you want there, except Sutton really... Very good in the last couple of minutes of the game. As he just proved. And Sutton has been somewhat handcuffed here in the second half, playing much of it with four fouls. Now in double figures. Eight point. Oklahoma State lead. And now, unlike the last couple of times, not much room for error here. Cyclones need points. What a move by Big Ben, and he's fouled. Crossover dribble got him the basket. Well, well, right on cue, and Big Ben between the legs really gives him that inside step. Watching baseline between the legs here gives him the step past Williams into Reeves. The shot is gone before the contact, therefore it doesn't disrupt the ball. Justice Big Ben, great offensive player. He's fun to watch. Big Pen well below his numbers today, averaging 16 on the season. But today, Big Pen in and out, and Hoiberg keeps it alive. Today, Big Pen with only a half dozen. Hoiberg, he took it right at Reeves. Hoiberg's got a dozen, and we've got a four-point ball game. Big Pen called for the foul. Sutton will go back to the line. In the heat of the moment, you expect young guys to react this way, but when Johnny Orr and his staff watches the film, they will tell Justice Thigpen, hey, don't reach in here. You've got him pinned in the backcourt with his head down and the 10-second clock running. Thigpen reached in and really bailed Sean Sutton out of a big jam. And that's the 10th team foul on Iowa State this half, which means that the Cowboys will be shooting two the rest of the way. Sutton has hit three straight down the stretch here. Quiet this crowd. Oklahoma State have lost their last two on the road. Trying to keep pace with Kansas. And I'm sure the Jayhawks are home in Lawrence right now, comfortably in front of their television sets after an impressive win over CU earlier today. Kansas certainly in the driver's seat in the Big Eight race. Hoiberg again. And the freshman is leading the way. And he hit that one over a pretty good defensive player in Hatcher. Hoiberg has 10 in the second half. And Sutton, who is making a living at the line, will go back there again. Bayless now has four. And it's becoming the Hoiberg and Sutton show. Hoiberg hitting the field goals and Sutton hitting the free throws. Five of five from the line today. That's why you say, Dave, throw out that 74%. You, you want somebody there that has confidence, good release and knows it's going in, and Sutton has been dynamite down the stretch. So I you have to start looking at threes now? Well, two minutes left, plenty of time. You can pound it inside. You're still two possessions down. 
A good shot is what you want. A good look at the basket. If it's a three, fine, take it. If it's not, look for something inside. Absolutely. Bayless. That's a good look. He's got 20. Now, you do not want to foul. You don't want to foul. You play defense. And they fouled Hatcher, who hit his last two free throws. Boyberg. That's just the first on Fred. See, Johnny Orr's up and say, hey, we don't want to foul. He's going to take a timeout. Heading pin reached in, and the Cowboys back to the free throw line. So before Hatcher goes to the line, we're going to step aside. 1.38 to go in regulation with Oklahoma State. One o'clock, it'll be Nebraska taking on Iowa State here in Ames. And at 3 o'clock, it's Colorado taking on Oklahoma. Norman, Dave, and I will be there. And it's the KUK State matchup also at 3 o'clock. So check your local listings for the game to be seen in your area. A reminder, you fans, the February 29th game time for the Iowa State at Oklahoma game is now 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock on that one. With Dave Logan, I'm Dave Armstrong. We'll take you down in the final moments of this one. 138 to go. Hatcher goes to the line with Oklahoma State leading by four. That was short from the time it left his hand. Four points down now. Even if this goes in. Cyclones two possessions down. Sutton's gone to the towel. He hasn't thrown in the towel. He's just gone to it to try to wipe the sweat away. And it looks like Williams is coming in for Hatcher. It looks like a beach towel, too. It's a big towel. <laughs> That's not one of those little hand towels. Uh -huh. Short. And Hatcher gets his own free throw. Oh, that's huge. Reeves. No. Yes. Reeves tipped in his own miss. And now the Cyclones cannot waste a lot of time. There's six points down. You want to get something up to the rim. Mikulik almost lost it. Bayless forced one. And we've got a foul down low. That's the 10th team foul on Oklahoma State. And that's on Houston, who picks up his fourth. Well, the best thing Iowa State can do now outside of score is to stop the clock. Houston from the side. Bayless really hung up in the air with not much room. Nowhere to go, but Houston gets his fourth foul. The good news for Oklahoma State is there's only one minute left. 105 to go. But Bayless nearing a career high. He's got 21 right now. He had 23 against Colorado earlier this week. He's turned out to be a pretty good offensive player. Kilgore Junior College out of Texas was a good defensive and free throw shooter, but he's got a nice offensive game. And a four point game again. They're trying to foul Hatcher if they can. They don't get to it. Smart play by Houston. Pull it out. Pull it out and run the clock. Sutton says, let me handle the ball. There's who you want to foul if you can, a freshman. And there's who you don't want to foul, a senior. Oh, but Reeves got ball. away with, with that ball. As soon as it touched his hands, he got rid of it like a hot potato. Bayless is foul out of the game. Fine offensive performance today by Ron Bayless. 22 points, you see. Bayless, the leading scorer in the game, will have to leave. Great game from Ron Bayless. Sutton shooting two for Oklahoma State. Sutton, who has hit six of six from the line today, will go back there, trying to give the Cowboys more cushion. They aren't even close to missing. You don't think he's feeling it. You can take a look at Sean Sutton's eyes. That he is fixed right on that rim. Pearson has checked in for Iowa State. Just as we say all that, there's a miss, and here comes Thigpen. He pulls up from three point range and hits it. Timeout, Iowa State. To the live. 
And it was dead at halftime, I'll tell you, with Oklahoma State leading by 18. The Cyclones have pulled to within two on a Justice Thick Ben three pointer with 41 seconds to go. Oklahoma State will have the ball on the possession arrow, points towards the Cowboys. The Cyclones have one timeout remaining. Had the shot clock turned off. Iowa State will try to play great defense for about 10 seconds, and then you have to foul. You try to stop them here. Now you want to foul. No, you don't. How about a steal instead? Unbelievable. Back outside. And now you got plenty of time. You go for the tie or the win. Well, I think you take the best available shot, and you want to make sure you take it before 10 seconds so you can have a chance to rebound and go for two. You call a timeout here to set it or just go? I think you go with it. This guy probably the best at taking it. We're tied. One second, Hatcher! comeback. Iowa State outscores Oklahoma State in the second half 47 to 29. A complete reversal of the first half where it was 38-20 Cowboys. And Oklahoma State will start with the basketball in overtime. Sutton and Houston now playing with four fouls. That wasn't big with 40 seconds to go but it's huge now. Houston puts it back and he's fouled. And Meyer goes down for the count. I tell you, he is as strong a 6'7 player as I can remember seeing in the last decade in college basketball. Watch the strength. He establishes position, then just takes the basketball away and then powers it up and over Lauren Meyer, who's 6'11, about 250 pounds. Tremendous strength by Byron Houston. Houston saying welcome to Big 8 basketball. See the guys in trouble now. And for Iowa State, the name you don't see is Ron Bayless. He's gone. He's fouled out with 22 points. And Houston now has 17. Make it 18. And a three-point cowboy lead. But heck, that's nothing for these Cyclones. They once trailed by 18. Interesting to see now if they can get Mika Lake on Houston and try to get Byron's fifth foul. Iowa State has to realize that Houston has four fouls, and Mika Lake, once he gets the basketball, has to take it at him. And Houston was there off the Hoiberg miss. And Williams, away from the action, Williams is somewhat shaken up. J.C. Leinbach, the official, wisely halts the game. Williams tries to gain composure. I think he may have hit his funny bone, which is only funny to those who don't have it hit. <laughs> well, he'll, hurt. he'll go out. Look at him holding that right arm. Hatcher will come back in. As long as Iowa State plays man, Houston is going to be the guy. Meyer, surrounded by black shirts, finds some freedom. Nikoli is open for a moment. Hoiberg is fouled. That's the third on Hatcher. Three fifty-eight to go in overtime. Look at Meyer. That's a, a welcome call from Byron Houston. was Mikalik in the first encounter. And now Meyer knows how he feels. And Hoiberg, after hitting 34 straight free throws, misses that one. Comes back 
to nail the second one to pull the Cyclones to within two. Under four minutes to go in overtime. Hatcher almost walked with it. Alexander for three, and what a big shot that was for Derwin Alexander, who now has a dozen. And Hatcher made it possible by attacking toward the basket. Iowa State forced a double team, kicks it back to a wide open Alexander. Now Mikali trying to get it to Hoiberg, and Hatcher, the guy they call the Phantom, stepped right in the way. Well, Hatcher's seen that cut about 500 times a day, just went over the top of the pick and got there before Hoiberg did. Cowboys again will try to use the clock to their advantage with a five-point lead. It's the time remaining in overtime. Sutton baseline throws it up and gets it. And he's mad he didn't get a foul. 17 for Sutton. And a seven-point Cowboy lead. Big Ben. Big Ben trying to take control now. He's got 13. Alexander steps through. Smart play by Alexander. Here's where you like seniors handling the basketball. And Eddie Sutton's got four seniors on the court right now. And Mikalik with a foul on Houston. And for Mikalik, he picks up his third foul. Williams is a little more than the funny bone, we are told. The report from the bench is that Corey Williams has a forearm contusion. Just above the funny bone. The Bruce Horn. It's been a long afternoon for Eddie Sutton. He'd like to make it a shorter trip home to Stillwater. Houston to shoot too. Now with 19 points. Remember we told you that he hadn't scored more than 19 in the last five games. He has a chance to do that right here. And Oklahoma State has taken charge of this overtime. And Houston is the guy that's doing it. Side for Big Ben. Mikali. Well, that's the kind of shot that keeps you in the game, keeps your pulse alive. Under two to go in overtime. Alexander working on Meyer decides to use the clock. You start fouling again. If you're Iowa State, I guess that's the answer to my question as Hoiberg wraps up Hatcher. Unlike when Oklahoma State was fending oh, off the cyclone charge in regulation, now the Cowboys want to milk that clock, and they're not necessarily so aggressive to take the ball inside. A five-point lead, under two to go. You want to make Iowa State come out and play you defensively and eventually foul you. Hatcher, two of four from the line, so that's the guy ISU wanted to foul. Remember, they're shooting two the rest of the way. Johnny Orr sweating this one out as well, trying to get to four and four in the big eight. And keep his uh, home streak intact. Cyclones have won 14 in a row here at home, dating back to last year. 12 of those this year. Hatcher gets the roll. And with 1.49 to go, Oklahoma State calls timeout. James, Iowa. There's our score, 79-72. We're in overtime with under two minutes to go with Dave Logan. I'm Dave Armstrong. And Oklahoma State led by 18 at the half. Iowa State made a furious comeback and tied it on a Justice Thigpen shot with about five seconds to go. As you see, both teams well over their team foul limit. ISU with one timeout remaining. Oklahoma State still has a couple. And a possession arrow in favor of the Cyclones. And seven points down, Iowa State needs the ball three times. That's not a bad start. Big Ben with his second tray of the game, and he's now got 16, 12 in the second half. 
Alexander using good ball control, weaving his way around the cyclone. Bring it back up. Ooh. No need to look to the basket now unless you've got a wide open layup. Hatcher didn't. Smart. And a foul on Corey Williams, who is three of three from the line today. Hoiberg is the guy that can give some fouls. That's just his third today. I remember, though, earlier that it was uh, Corey Williams who went to the bench with his right arm hurting. We'll see if that will affect this free throw. Slimed it in, but it went anyway. Four of four now from the line for Corey Williams. Slimed it in? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds kind of greasy, doesn't it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll take it. He'll take that one, too. Yeah. That was perfect. No grease on that one. No, sir. That was clean. Six-point Cowboy lead. Big pin or McCoy. The shooters from three-point range. Big pin for another three! Wow! Is that something? Cyclones take their last time out. They're not dead yet. Back kids come back again. Iowa State down 18, tied it at the end of regulation. Now they're down three. Big pen has come up huge with 19 points, 15 in the second half. You see now, though, the Cyclones are out of timeouts. And Oklahoma State has the basketball. Iowa State got the steal at the end of regulation in the back basket by Thigpen. And here's another steal. McCoy, and he's fouled by Sutton, who is fouled out of the game. And I'll tell you, if this game gets into another overtime, Oklahoma State's in a big jam. McCoy with the steal, Sutton leans in a little bit, actually got there in time, but he leans with his upper body. The bounce pass is late, Alexander pinned in the corner, Williams not coming to the ball, that's close. That is close. That's one that if you're home in Stillwater, you get the charge. That was uh, one of those 50-50 calls. Sutton, as you mentioned, though, did lean a little bit to the right. And he is not happy. And Eddie Sutton just told his son, hey, don't talk to the officials. Sean really giving Ron Spittler an earful, and Eddie said, that's enough. Yeah, that's the last thing he needs, the technical right now, as Reeves checks in. And you lose a ball handler, you lose leadership. You don't need rebounding or size right now with under 50 seconds to go. And McCoy with a ball in his hands and a chance to pull the Cyclones to within one. That's his first free throw today, and he misses it. Well, this one here is big, because this could pull Iowa State to within two. We're just under 49 seconds to go. Another miss. Oh, big Guess rebound. Guess who has the rebound? Big rebound by Houston. That's just going up and clamping on the basketball. And the foul on Hoiberg, his fourth. Now he doesn't have any more to give. He's picked up three here in overtime. Boy, Johnny Orr got exactly what he wanted. The steal, not much time left. He fouls out Sean Sutton, and McCoy misses both free throws. Mm. You want to get into coaching? <laughs> Think again. Sutton just trying to smile through the pain. Now Reeves back out. I think good substitution by Eddie Sutton. Brown in, quicker defensive player. And Houston will get two. Four of six from the line. It's amazing how many games will come down to what your team can do from 15 feet out mm. and nobody contesting the shot. Byron Houston needs this one to make two possessions for the Cyclones. And now that second miss by McCoy looks huge. 
and how Iowa State needs the basketball twice. And you can't use a lot of time. Thigpen's the guy. Thigpen for another three. Oh! Unbelievable. Good foul. Thigpen picks up his third, and he got Milton Brown, who is just a 50% free throw shooter. Good foul by Justice Thigpen. Not much time off the clock, and a guy that is really unfamiliar with stepping up at a big time and nailing free throws. Brown, a 50% free throw shooter. 12 of 24 on the year. And it's not so much the 50%, it's when the 50% comes. How many times has he shot in the last minute of a game in the overtime? Even if he hits them both, Iowa State still will be within three. And I tell you, standing up there, that basket looks like it's 100 feet away from if you don't have confidence at the free throw line. What's this feel like? Sutton still trying to encourage. Boy, this one's real big. You can miss here, and Iowa State could have win it. You can shoot all the free throws you want in practice, but you cannot get the feel of shooting in front of 15,000 people who are screaming as loud as they can. Boy, he quieted the crowd, and that was a big one. And Reeves will check back in for Brown. 31 seconds to go, and ISU in the same position they were at the end of regulation. A chance to win it or tie. I'll tell you what, if I'm Johnny Orr, I want Justice Thigpen to take this shot, whether it's a three or a deuce. Cleared side again. Williams, one of the best defenders in the Big Eight against the hottest offensive guy in the building. Give it back to him. Justice was in Johnny Orr's outhouse. In the beginning of this game, he could go to the penthouse oh, here. Nice. Hoiberg is fouled. But you know who made it possible? Justice Thigpen. Thigpen again looking to shoot, and Oklahoma State knew it. Three guys on him. He dumps the ball in. There's the foul by Williams. And Hoiberg in strong. Look how many guys are on Justice Thigpen. Everybody watching him. Hoiberg, great strength up and off the glass. And guess what? Iowa State, first lead of the day. Oklahoma State led by 18 at the half. They led by seven in this overtime. And Hoiberg has a chance to put the Cyclones up by one with under nine seconds to go. Freddie is back. Freddie lives at Hilton. Hoiberg has 17. This is an unbelievable basketball game. Okay, Justice Thigpen, just a great move. Didn't force the shot. It would have been a tough shot. But he draws the defenders to him and then dumps the basketball. Hoiberg, smart move for a freshman, strong to the glass. It's been an unbelievable comeback. I really counted Iowa State out twice, to be honest. First of all, in regulation, when they were down 18, and then when they were down seven in the overtime, I thought it was over again. Don't feel bad. There are several thousand here that shared your feeling. And now the pressure falls on the freshman Hoiberg to give Iowa State their first lead of the game. He does. much time got a hurry four seconds Alexander he is fouled and so Alexander an 80 percent free throw shooter will have a chance to give the Cowboys a lead with two seconds to go but Darren Alexander makes a senior play he jumps directly into Justice Thigpen in the NBA this is an offensive foul and I'm not so sure it's not in college basketball either oh Alexander really jumps directly into Thigpen to create the contact. He's going to get two free throws out of it. Smart play by Darrell. 
80% free throw shooter from the line. But one of two today. He needs this one to tie it and send it to perhaps another overtime. What a ball game. Eddie Sutton had exactly who he wanted at the line. Derwin Alexander, an 80% free throw shooter. And Sutton watched Alexander miss them both. What a finish. Let's go to Dave Logan, who is with a very happy Johnny Orr. Unbelievable comeback. You've been in coaching a long time. You ever seen one better than this? No, I've never seen anything. I've never seen a better performance than Justice Stigpen put on. He was absolutely phenomenal. Shooting, passing the ball. He did a great job, and it was tough on Alexander to miss it. He deserved it. That wasn't a foul, man. It was the greatest comeback I've ever been involved in. And I'm so proud my team never gave up. Boy, they came out fighting. Johnny, you're 18 points down at halftime. What'd you tell them in the locker room? Well, I told them they got to play harder, man, and they got to get their idea that they just got to get out there and play. We miss a lot of shots, and we just go and play the game. We're going to get those shots. And we got lucky. We got them going, and, and Justice, come on there. He made a great performance. It's a great game for us. That gives us 18 wins, and we beat the number two team in the nation. Hell of a victory. You started out, last question, you started out in the 2-3 zone. Yeah. They shot you out of that. I thought Whoa. the difference was the man-to-man -man the second half. Oh, yeah, we really got aggressive. We started double team. We pressed him up, made him move the ball, turn the ball over. We did a hell of a job, Dave, and thank you very much. Nice win, John. Johnny Orr, who's happy with that one, why not? Let's send it back to Dave Armstrong. Okay, man. <laughs> I'll tell you, is he happy or what? Just a thick pen goes from the outhouse to the penthouse. And a one-point Iowa State win in overtime.